So hopefully you have some kind of flow chart uh, to help you with deciding how to attack a factoring problem. In one of the previous videos we talked about if there were four terms, your first uh, option would be to group two terms, you know, the first two terms and the second two terms and see if there was any greatest common factor out of those groupings that you could take out and uh, continue on that process until you can get it factored down. Now, if that doesn't uh, that option doesn't work, you may still be able to factor a four-term polynomial, and that would be by grouping the first three three terms and leaving the fourth term by itself, uh, or vice versa, where the first term would be left by itself, and then the final three terms would be grouped together. Now, if that's what you're trying to do, then you're you're hopefully going to make this into a difference of squares problem. Uh, to be able to finish it. Now, you know, sometimes it's not obvious what you are, uh, how you're grouping them, but usually a key to determining whether or not you're grouping two and two or three terms and one term is if either the first term or the fourth term is something completely separate, uh, you know, using separate variables. Uh, also, you know, either if the first term or the fourth term is a perfect square, that's usually an indication that you might want to be grouping it three terms and one term. So I'm only going to do three examples of this. And on this first one, you know, these are the kind of indicators you want to look for. The fourth term here is a y squared and there is no other y in any of our other three terms. Also it's a perfect square and it's subtraction. So if we can somehow get this try or you know these three terms to factor into a perfect square, we would have a difference of squares problem. So we're just going to group the first three and leave the fourth term by itself. And what we're trying to do now is just concentrate on this grouping and so it's a little trinomial and factor that. Now if you remember correctly you should be probably using the A times C method and in this case A is 1 and C is 9. 1 times 9 is 9 and we're thinking of factors of 9 that can combine to give us 6. Now, if you're really grasping this, it's not as big a deal as some of the other ones because the only way we can move forward on this kind of problem is if we can make this trinomial into a perfect square. And so, you know, there's not very many factors of 9 anyway, but the only one that would work would be the 3 times 3. And, you know, maybe you can, you know, as I work through it, you'll see kind of why. But again, we're going to use that to rewrite this as x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9 and then we gotta keep our minus y squared here you know we do this so that we can group the first two and the second two factor out a greatest common factor so out of this first one we could take an x out and we'd be left with x plus 3 and out of the second one we can take a positive 3 out and we're left with x plus 3 and then don't forget about the minus y squared. Both of these groupings have a common factor of x plus 3, so we can take that out front, x plus 3. We're left with x plus 3. And now we're just going to rewrite this as x plus 3 quantity squared minus y squared. And now we have a difference of squares problem. Again, you can do that because, you know, if you think backwards, squaring something means you're multiplying it, uh, you know, the base by itself. Okay, so anything times itself is something squared. So now we're just going to take the square root of both of these. Square root of x plus 3 squared is x plus 3. Square root of y squared is y. One gets a plus and one gets a minus.
So we're going to work through another one of these examples. And you should always be looking to factor out a greatest common factor. And at first glance, it does look like we can in this case. But, you know, you notice there is no 4 with the first term. So we actually cannot. And maybe you would try to group it, the first two and the last two, and then you'd kind of get stuck. So before you give up and call this a prime polynomial, you want to try and group the first three with the last one or leave the first term alone and group the last three. But again, the kind of clue on which order to do that is all three of these terms uh, can be grouped together a lot easier than this one with the z squared. Also, this last term is a perfect square and we're subtracting it. So let's try to group the first three together and leave the fourth one alone. Okay. Now you can go through your A times C method again to factor this trinomial that we have in the parentheses here. Okay, but remember we're trying to make this into a perfect square trinomial. Uh, that way we can have a difference of squares problem. So when we factor this, you know, you're thinking of numbers that multiply to give you positive 4 and add together to give you negative 4. And so that would be a negative 2 and a negative 2. And again, you know, when you're factoring, it's always a good idea to multiply back, you know, what you've factored to make sure that you can get the, uh, get the trinomial or the uh, polynomial that you have come from. Okay, but now we're going to write the x minus 2 times x minus 2 as x minus 2 quantity squared minus 4z squared. And we do have a per, uh, difference of squares problem, right? We have two terms, even though this is more, you know, complex, it's still one term minus another term, both of those terms being perfect squares. So when we take the square root of the first term, we're left with x minus 2. When we take the square root of the second term, we have 2z. One gets a plus and one gets a minus. We look to see if there's any like terms that we might be able to combine. In this case, there is not, and so we're done. So for the final example I'm going to do, uh, this one is a little bit different than the other two uh, because of the arrangement of the problem. Uh, you know, you might look at this at first and say, oh, well, look, you know, we have a last term uh, that is being subtracted and is a perfect square. And so I'm going to try to group the first three together. But once you group the first three together, you would be kind of stuck because, uh, you know, there's an A in this term, but then another A doesn't show up in our other three. So actually we're going to do this one backwards and you know there there's a lot of going on here that maybe you would think maybe you group the first two and the second two but that would be a dead end. And so I'm going to group the final 3 together. And again we're trying to make a difference of squares problem so it is very important for us to have a subtraction sign in here. When you're grouping the last 3 terms you're going to want to factor out a negative. Uh, and that way we can set up a difference of squares problem. And you just got to be careful, just like any other time you're dealing with negatives. When you write this, that's saying that you factored out a negative sign. And so inside, you'd be left with b squared minus 8b plus 16. And so it's very important to pay attention because of this sign here. But if we can get this trinomial to be a perfect square, then we would have a square minus a square, and then we'd be able to proceed. So again, you know, if you need to do the A times C method, that's always a safe and good way to do it. We're thinking of numbers that multiply to give us positive 16, add to give us negative 8, and those numbers would be a negative 4 and a negative 4. You know, and again, if you need to refoil to check, that's a good idea. B times B is B squared. B times negative 4 is negative 4B. Minus 4B would give us our negative 8B. Negative 4 times negative 4 would give us our positive 16, so we're all good. 
We're going to rewrite this as a squared minus b minus 4 quantity squared. And now we have the situation that we were hoping for. A perfect squared minus another perfect squared. And we're just going to take the square root of both of those. Square root of a squared is a. The square root of b minus 4 quantity squared is b minus 4. One gets a plus and one gets a minus.